Welcome back to Potty Talk, the, the podcast, podcast where we shit talk, talk ourselves. ourselves. I'm Jack. And I'm Tori. I thought you were going to say Tor. Wasn't that the whole thing? And I'm Tor. Take this is two. Her. Okay. Anyways, welcome to uh, the podcast. Me and Tori have been talking about doing a podcast for what? A couple months now. I think it just really came to me. That didn't sound good. We've only been thinking about it for a couple months. I've been thinking about this for years. <laughs> Gotta sound more dedicated. <laughs> okay, well, the idea came because we were inspired by other podcasts, and then we thought, well, you know what? We've got a lot of shit to say, so why don't we just share our opinions on certain things in life and, you know, start our own little I really honestly don't think this is going to add much value to anyone's life. Don't say but, that. <laughs> but um, we, we honestly just talk so much between ourselves and say the most outrageous <laughs> things, really. <laughs> How do I structure that? Um, yeah, and we were, what, flying to L.A. I had been thinking about doing a podcast for the past kind of few years. Um, if you guys don't know, I actually do YouTube. So I've always, like, loved making video content, but I've always wanted a platform where I could just kind of, like, ramble and rant and not really worry about things, like, visually looking good or, like, just worrying about talking. And um, so I've always wanted to do a podcast. You were kind of chatting about it, but we had this idea. Yeah, no, I just, like, wanted to talk shit. So <laughs> that's why I'm here. I don't know. No, no. You're, you have a much more technical answer. I'm just like, I just got a lot of shit to say. I just want to talk smack. Um, yeah. No, we were flying to LA, and we were we weren't even sitting together. We couldn't even afford <laughs> seats beside each other. We were trying to save a, save a dollar, and you were sitting there. And across, she's like handing me my bagel because you had my Tim Hortons oh, bagel. Oh yeah, getting strangers to pass along the it bagel. It was little, like pass the bagel. There's like a row of like five people, yeah. and I was like, ma'am, actually, you pass this us was on? the craziest flight because so midway through the flight, we're going to LA. It's about a what five hour, six hour flight. In Toronto and she's like we should start a podcast <laughs> and I'm like what she's like we should start a podcast and I can see she's like pointing to her ears yeah and then when we landed we're like we, I finally we pitched it to you yeah I like I I, I gave you the I like I gave the whole passion spiel to you I was like, yeah the uber I was like, to the this hotel. is it this is it i have a good feeling about this then we ended up in new york for fashion week that's when that's when things really we sound so annoying i don't like that we just said it like that we're flying to la and then we're going to new york fashion week this was a very like outlier of a situation no. i rarely f when do you fly to la then to new york often. fashion week often Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Guys, this is not I the already dislike my co-host. No, Kate. No, we were in New York for work, and then we decided to go out one night, and we went and had dinner, and this I remember is it was the night of the Grammys, because the Grammys were on in Soho. Oh, they were on in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were at Soho House, and it's like a creative hub there, so you already feel, like, inspired. There's, like, people ever I, having actually, important Actually, I meetings. feel irrelevant when I go to Soho in New York. <laughs> I'm like, I do not belong in here. You're just, like, re-inspired by, like, all this, like, yeah. cool stuff happening around you. Anyways, we started chatting, and then we landed on Potty Talk as the name for the podcast, which I still don't really fully know Okay. okay. Where let me provide You came up with it, I think. Yeah, obviously or, I'm the creative genius of the No, two of us, well that be could real. be untrue because We're I think in my I said it using my gear, so we got the brains of the operation this time. Oh yeah, if you're wondering why we're in a closet, <laughs> we can't talk about this until season two, and I'm saying that with all seriousness. Like there's a couple of reasons why we can't tell you why we're in a closet, but we're currently sitting in like a shoe infested. Like I've got tons of shoes above in here. This is my uh, closet. And Girls got some smelly shoes, so it's not it's not the best situation. We're definitely a little sweaty, but that's how invested and serious we are in doing this. Anyways, I digress. So we're sitting in Soho House. We are ranting. We're well, not ranting. We're kind of bouncing ideas off each other, spitballing. Well, we have two other dinner guests sitting with us, not invested in this idea Also, whatsoever. they thought this was the worst idea. Everyone thought this was such a bad idea. You want to know what it was? I think everyone, friends, family, business partners, they have been saying, don't do this. You're going to lose all your sponsors. You're going to, it's not a good look for you guys. You have a clean image. Whatever. That means and I like, hate that is... it's not a good look for you guys. Like, no. you don't even know me. On it, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me. You don't know me like um, that. But no, I think honestly, where this comes from, we've just like wanted to kind of break down the barrier and like stop worrying about like things being perfect or you know saying the right things or saying the wrong things. And we just want to be real and have that conversation totally. and not worry about. 100%. Like I think your YouTube life is filtered. Friendly. My Instagram life is filtered. There's a lot of stuff that we put out to audiences that is not necessarily um, the most realistic to what's actually going down in our day-to-day -day Yeah, lives. it's a fraction of your Yeah, it's a yourself. part of it for sure, but it's just not all of it. And I think it was just time for us 
to show you all of it. This is where we fly. <laughs> Can you imagine? This is where we go. Oh! You know what? This is an audio podcast. We have to stop <laughs> relying on visuals. We just pretended to flash you guys. We we wouldn't do that though. That's I mean that's so ridiculous. Two. That's season two content right there. <laughs> yeah. Um. True. Anyway, so we we cannot stay on topic. This is going to be our problem. <laughs> we are in Soho House talking about the idea for the name. We're bouncing different things. You were saying Lucky Duck was one. We had TTY. We had a bunch of random different ideas. Yeah. And we're like, what do we want this to be? We want to be talking shit basically, but not about other people specifically about ourselves, about ourselves and yeah. sharing the downfalls, sharing the not-so-glamorous Instagram highlight moments. 100%. And kind of, like, giving you guys the backstory to our lives. Right. I think it started with us being like, oh, just talking shit. Like, that was the inspiration. Yeah. And then you were like, like, potty talk. No, you want to know what it was? I was ordering a salad off the menu, and it had, like, <laughs> watermelon radish in it or something so obscure. And I, when I speak about food or, like, things, we always shorten the words. So I'll be like, oh, instead of blueberries, it's bloobs or watermelon watermelon would be wadi and so we always I mean that's ridiculous <laughs> it's fine so we were talking about podcasts we were saying oh we gotta make a potty like we gotta do the potty and then potty talk just struck oh, us oh yeah true yeah. okay yeah 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 yeah. anyways they don't care how the name came no, to no no they might you don't know that so mm-hmm. now you know and it's great because we actually opened with this in the first episode so you'll never have to wonder but you will have to wonder why we're in the closet <laughs> that I cannot share yet um, since this is the first episode I feel like we do have some formal housekeeping uh, things to go over just to kind of lay the groundwork um if nobody knows who you are can you tell them who you are rude yeah if you don't know who i am that's ridiculous tori my name is tori webster tori sloan webster named after ferris peeler's day off my absolute favorite movie sloan peterson okay anyways so yeah jacqueline and i have been friends for what three years now a long three years (laughs) three years i don't know it seems too long yeah. It's really weird, though. You're probably one of the only um, friends in my life, like, newer friends, I guess, that I feel like I've known you since I was a child. Yeah, like, maybe, like, long-lost sisters. We actually had a, a debate once where, or not a debate, but a complex, thinking that we were related at some point. We Both have, of our mother's names are Tracy Lynn. That is no word of a lie. <laughs> yeah, and, like, a lot of crossover and, like, life events that were similar. True, true. Our baby photos look alike, which is weird. It's just many of things that are strange. But anyways... Confirmed so we, we're not related. Yeah, we context. are not related. But, um, yeah, I guess the way we kind of met was through a mutual friend, but still, like, in the industry, we were, Jacqueline was already in the YouTube world, I was already kind of in, like, the content creator world as well, Mm -hmm. and we got connected by a mutual friend, Tony Rose, shouts out, Tony Rose, and we were at a festival, Mm -hmm. actually, and you asked Adam, my boyfriend, to help you take a video, and then that's how we met. It's so funny, so the very first time we met, it is, like, kind of captured on video, because I posted, I think it was a vlog from this festival called Bestival, which, does that even happen in Toronto anymore? No, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, And I was, like, recording some footage, and then Adam, her boyfriend, is a cinematographer, and he, first of all, looks at my camera, he's like, can I switch out the lens? Like, he has a full stop in his backpack. I'm like, honestly, I would love that. So he shot a couple of clips, and we were getting, like, glitter in our hair. So it's just weird, looking back, being like, that was actually when we first met. Yeah. Because we weren't friends after that. We just, like, said hi, and whatever, like, we were friendly. Nice enough. But didn't care to was stay in not touch. inspired. <laughs> not inspired. No, to be but we just friend. kind of like whatever did our own thing, yeah. and then we probably what reconnected like three Couple four months, months later, down the line, yeah. and At then a makeup event. Yeah, and Revlon brought us together. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> this is our first. Is this our first ad read? Uh, Revlon products. Can yeah. we just go right into brought it? our friendship? No, yeah, no. no. Um, seriously, it was like at Shoppers Drug Mart. We were just chilling. It was, and then she was like, "Oh my god, like the Bachelorette is on. You should come back to my house and watch it." And I was like, "Oh." And we bonded over the Bachelorette. Yeah, so it was like the Bachelor slash Bachelorette franchise <laughs> franchise that actually brought us together, which is ABC. Ironic. Chris Harrison always does that. Wow, bringing That's relationships wild. together, bringing friendships together. That show, what doesn't it do? I mean, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, I feel like you didn't even dive into you, yourself, though. Yeah, that was so, how okay, we became so that's how we Who became friends. Who are you? I am a... <laughs> what a a what big crisis. Nowadays, I don't know I'm who I am anymore. Socialite. That's my new... That's such a lie, obviously. Corey, you sound no, no, I'm an actor. So unlikable right I'm now. I'm an actor. <laughs> that's why I'm acting like this. <laughs> no, no. So, yeah, I grew up acting. Uh, that was kind of how I started my career. I was... Um, 13 or 14, I guess, when I... <laughs> why are sorry. you laughing? I was I can't a believe child I'm a socialite. Actor. Who says that? It was a joke. Kim Kardashian has inspired me in my life, okay? This is absurd. So I started acting when I was about 12, and then I guess my claim to fame was a YTV slash Nickelodeon show called Life with Boys. 
um, which was like a teen sitcom, which is honestly why I'm so hilarious now into my later years. I just really honed those skills at a young age. I so. don't know if your dry humor is going to be conveyed properly over this. People are going to be like, <laughs> who is this girl? I hope you can tell that I'm obviously joking. I'm, what is, what is that? Like irony or no, no, no. <laughs> I think I life have- is a theater. <laughs> Okay, that's done. That's all you need for your bio. No, and um, then now I'm a content creator, which basically means I, like, shoot a lot of content and share it on social media, but, like, we're going to get into that in later episodes as, as to, like, how that turned into my job and all those things. Yeah, I think In all seriousness, yes, I was an actor, then I went to school, um, I was in a creative industries program at Ryernet, Ry- there's no edits on this, so that's staying in. I'm just... I was um, in a business and creative program at Ryerson University in Toronto, and then now I am a full-time content creator, but I have done many of things like internships and crazy things along the way, which we will get into in later episodes. Yeah, and definitely make sure you guys are commenting um, down below, either on the YouTube video or leave a review on the podcast app. Yeah, just... And uh, let us know what other topics you want us to dive into because we want this to be like a very interactive thing. And we don't want to, I mean, we are talking a lot of nonsense, but we want the nonsense to be relevant to what you guys want to hear and um so yeah let us know and we're we're pretty receptive at this stage i mean we're sitting in a closet so it's only up from here um anyways and if you guys don't know who i am you probably don't my name is jacqueline forbes unfortunately not related to the forbes empire in any oh yeah way. and actually my parents are not related to the dictionary either oh phew i was wondering that thank god yeah. you cleared that up um no and uh, i do youtube full-time i actually went to school to be a makeup artist um and did makeup and film and tv for a little bit and then ended up you know, I was posting on YouTube during the time and that kind of took off in the sense that it became more of my focus. And for the past like four ish years, that's kind of what I've been doing. And, um, yeah, but I actually grew up, um, acting and I, this is the funniest story. So I knew of Tori at the time because I actually auditioned for her life with boys show. Let's be clear. I booked the role. She is clearly the better. uh, (laughs) What was your character's name on the show? Tess Foster. She was the one and only Tess Foster. One and only. But this is what's so funny is I knew of her. So this would have been, I think I was in grade seven or eight. What grade were you in? Because she's a. Yeah, I started shooting in grade nine. So that makes sense. Yeah, so I would have been in grade eight. And I remember like auditioning. I think I maybe only had like three auditions for the show. But like by the was the audition scene like a push-up scene or something? Yeah, I remember a it. wrestling scene. Yes, because I remember doing push-ups in this audition. And then, obviously, I didn't book it. And then I found out, like, maybe months down the line that this Tori Webster girl booked it. And I was like, this girl? Yeah, a who star. Who is she? A star from the beginning, So honestly. it's crazy how it, uh, our lives were yeah. crossed again. And they would have been crossed in so many ways, because I was actually supposed to go to school in her year in her program. Yeah, we didn't, didn't go to makeup school. Late, we were discussing this, like, how we, we should have met. We should have met so many yeah, other ways, we, but we, we didn't. didn't. We also decided, though, that if we had met at an earlier time, maybe we would have hated each other. We definitely would have hated each other, for sure. If we so, were, <laughs> like, now you guys get content because we love each other, so. Yeah, and here we are shooting a podcast. Um, okay, so I feel like that kind of, you know, that sets the groundwork. That's a good intro, yeah. What were we even going to talk about? I feel like we had an idea, but now that we're going, it's very hot in this closet. I was saying earlier that I think I have an illness that I believe she gave to me. We've been on a bit of a this bender. Is crazy. <laughs> in the sense that we uh, had a bunch of concerts this week and yeah. late Laney. nights. Lainey. Lainey. Lainey the band. If you are mm. honestly at this stage and you're still listening to this podcast, you need to do yourself a serious favor and shut this podcast off and go listen to Lainey. Wow. Why are we encouraging our viewers to click off on the very first because, episode? Because I'm just trying to impact people's lives here. I said from the beginning this podcast was about entertainment, and if you want entertainment, you're going to need to go check that out. Yeah, it's weird. We were saying, so we went to the um, these two shows for Lainey, who I feel like they're actually not, not that they're not well-known, they're known, but like not as big as we imagine they are. We're like, they're this amazing, big, famous band, and they're, they're really not... No, they're more mainstream. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we went to their shows, and I think we're both 12-year-old fangirls. I was a, I say this all the time. I grew up being such a fangirl, loving so many different bands and music and going to much music as a kid to, like, watch all the tapings of shows. I've been so fascinated by that my whole mm-hmm. life. And um, I felt like, not that I grew out of it, but now that I do more hosting stuff for my job, that I just, I don't, not that I don't care as much. I don't know the right wording, but I'm less, like, fangirly about it yeah but paul j Klein and laney brought it out in me inspired jacqueline has like this Mm -hmm. hidden life that she doesn't talk about wherein she actually is like strangely connected both like emotionally and physically to harry styles in many ways (laughs) well i think this was more like the birth of my youtube beginnings because one of the first videos i posted was about 
um, this One Direction contest that I won. And I still get messages, actually, from people, like, on YouTube in the comments or on so DMs. So tell us about it. Well, I mean, you can just watch the video. I'm not going to get back into that. But I obviously, like, when I was, like, 13 to 16, yeah. um, loved One Direction. Harry Styles was and remains my ultimate crush of life. Um, and there was just... I, I feel like I have this weird luck with things, like... I don't know if you want to say it's manifesting things or just having a good juju. She or does. Just, she get if she wants it, she gets it. Oh, no. In but a good, not way. in a bratty way. Just no, like, no. That sometimes when you put things out into the world, like things just happen, and I always seem yeah, to get lucky in vibes. weird situations. So, um, anyways, that whole con- contest and experience that was a whole a whole time in my life. Um, she told me this week she passed a bit of juju onto me, and some good things happened to me. So yeah, so there's some magic here. There is. It's it's a running joke. I'm trying to think of like the list of good juju stories we could get into. I mean, oh, powers of manifestation. She was on The Price is Right. Mm. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, who in their life is just like, oh. That was also a crazy experience. Basically, long story short, there was, um, I was in L.A. with my family over Christmas, and our flight got delayed. We were kind of bummed out because we just kind of wanted to get home after this point. It had been a long trip. And during the flight delay, we go to kill some time at a taping of The Price is Right, and I somehow got picked from that and won two pink ATVs, some sunglasses, and some cameras. That I was a... I can't believe that. That's crazy. But this is the weird thing, and it's not like I'm not... I don't want to say not grateful, but, like, I'm almost, like... And again, not not surprised, but when I was there, I was like, oh, I have a feeling I'm going to get picked on it. Like, sometimes the universe just gives me the energy, you know? You, you are God. <laughs> <laughs> I like, have the control of like, this. No. Um, but it was like, it was like with the Laney show, we ended up getting really lucky and, um... We got a meet and greet because of Jacqueline. I randomly entered this contest and somehow won it, and... And then she, okay, this is ridiculous. She, no one else had a plus one, and then she literally just emails them, and she says, Hi, actually, yeah, my friend Tori's coming with me, and I can't do this without my friend Tori, so, like, can I have a plus one? That's not how it was worded and, at all, No, but okay, whatever, it's sure. We asked to bring an extra person. <laughs> they were really generous. Yeah, and, and then and they were so generous, and then they were like, yeah, and I'm like, who... How's that kind of luck? We got lucky. We really got lucky. So lucky. So I've been passing it on to you. What's been your week of good luck? What good things happened this week? Well, we got the booth the next night. Right. That was lucky. I feel like you had some other good juju you were telling me about. Um, The juju can be good or bad, though. Like, it's... it's. Yeah, you can't You can use it for evil. But I I never do that. (laughs) (laughs) Tori just Literally, we're, like, at the concert. She's like... The game of manipulation is my favorite game. <laughs> that is craziness. Uh, um, the juju. Hey, you said podcast honesty, so we gotta be honest about who no, we the, are as people. The juju is real for sure. Um, what else was I gonna talk about? I feel like I had this whole thing mapped out. People were trying to give us advice about how the podcasts work and they're or how the podcasts tend to work, and they're like, "You think you have a game plan? You go into it, and then you just talk about everything you want to talk about in five minutes." And you're like, well, here I am, sitting in a closet, sweating with Tori Webster. <laughs> okay. And that's what I wanted this all to be about. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think what this episode, what we want to, in all seriousness, say is that we hope, and kind of the reason we started this was really just to find a new outlet for ourselves to be creative and, like, come up with new ideas and share content in new exciting ways as opposed to doing it the way we've always comfortably done it and I think with that like we just hope that whether you're already a follower of ours or if you have no idea who we are and you're probably just, the latter yeah you're just <laughs> kind of you know stumbled upon us well we hope that we can give some insight into what it's like you know being young and you know, in your 20s and working in the creative industries and kind of share our insights into what we've learned so far and big mistakes we've made, strong decisions mm. we've made that have led to some successful things. Um, but really I'm just always interested in hearing the mistakes. I love hearing that. Same. I feel like you learn the most from, like, the things that didn't work out. But what I think is interesting is that most of the time they never see that. Like, exactly. they don't see the five failed videos before one good well, one comes up, Well, that's my you know? point, and that was kind of the inspiration for this. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, at the top of everything, obviously, we want you guys to just be entertained, but then we also hope that you can get, like, a little bit of, you know, insight into some of the things we've experienced, or, whether that becomes, like, advice or whatever, but, you know. Or good juju. Maybe they can take some good juju away. Yes. The Jacqueline juju. Wow, Honestly, the jack. I know this sounds so crazy, and I'm not that. I don't even think I'm that spiritual of a person, but I right. do. I do my gratefulness journal every day, and it's just 
it takes five minutes. Um, it's called the five minute journal, the one that I'm using right now. And you just kind of map out like five great things that, um, or five things you're grateful for, three things that would make your day good, and like one like powerful I am statement. And I know it sounds so like airy fairy, and I if you were to tell me to do this five years ago, I'd be like, why am I doing this? This is yeah. so dumb. But it really does just kind of start your day off on the right foot and like mindset. I know everyone says this, but mindset is truly everything. And someone could be given the same two situations and your two perspectives, like my perspective and your perspective, if I was coming at it with like more of a positive approach and you were like being more negative about it, yeah, the two same things can affect two people so differently. So having a strong mindset and like trying to have a good outlet or outlook on things, I really think can affect all the like situations and cards that you're given. 100%. So, definitely important. But um, that also... I also think like from a young age, like in terms of like identity, I feel like we, we know ourselves better mm. than really? maybe a lot of... I feel that way. I, I feel don't like know if I've I feel al- that way. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. I'm, I'm in a crisis. No, no, but I feel like a str- mm. I've always had a very strong sense of self, like, before yeah. anything else. Um, I mean, we can obviously get into this in later episodes, but I think even, like, you know, when I started dating Adam, like, I had only had one serious boyfriend. Like, I spent a lot of time alone True. in my, like, early adolescent year. Not alone, like, physically like obviously I have <laughs> you friends. were a lonely girl I just mean alone with my thoughts a lot and really developed a sense of like identity and like what my passions were and like what I wanted to do in life and I feel like if you're at that stage where you're feeling a little bit lost which you might be or you may not be it can be really helpful to like go inward and like you were saying like write your gratefulness mm-hmm. journals and do those types of things no but. I definitely think there's value to kind of like figuring out who you are on your own first 100% but also it's like that also almost sounds limiting to say that because it's like if someone's going through a hard and time. And Adam's made me better. Let's be, oh, on, yeah. let's be honest, right? <laughs> so like, you know, like if your partner is yeah. making you better. Or if someone is going through a hard time, they need someone else to kind of have support from or to mm-hmm. talk to. Like I think it's just understanding what you need. Totally. And I, I agree. For me, like growing up, like my late teenage hood, teenagerism, teenagerhood years, um, there was so much value in me just like spending time alone. It allowed me to focus on my business. It, la- it allowed me to focus on like what was important to me and kind of like what I wanted in life. Whereas... In my younger years, I was a mess, like, mentally, I think. Whereas being alone in my later years, I feel like, kind of helped me sort things out and just, like, realize who I am. But it's weird, because I feel like I have this over... Like, you were talking about having this strong sense of self, and I was, like, when I was 16... I finished school early, so I was done school at 16, and I'm like, I'm supposed to go to university, like, this is so crazy, I'm so young, mm-hmm. but I thought at that time, I was like, I'm so mature, like, I know myself, I know what's up, and then I look back, and I'm like, whoa, that was, well, six years ago now, I'm 21, um, five years ago, mental math is a problem here, five years ago, um, <laughs> clearly should have stayed in high school that extra year, right? Um, but I look back, and I'm like, whoa, I am such a different person from, not, maybe not a different, but I have evolved in such a way that it feels like such a departure of who I was when For I was sure. 16. For sure. But I think you bring pieces of that self. Like, I Mm. think, you know, one of my good friends, Stephen Shaw, he, like, often talks about, like, how your younger self actually knows you better than any other version of yourself because you're dreaming your biggest and you're less aware of the impacts of, like, day-to-day stresses, like, paying a mortgage and, like, Mm. going to university and, like, all of these things. Um, And that younger version of yourself is the biggest dreamer without even realizing it because you see that the world is your oyster and it can be good to go into that kind of almost childish mindset when you're going through those, like, harder times. When you don't have those fears, too. Mm -hmm. You're not, like, thinking about all the restrictions. Less fearful, you know. Okay, speaking of younger years, what are the craziest stories you have from elementary school and high school that, like when you think back to those times Mm -hmm. you just are like whoa that was the craziest moment um like funny stories really like memorable ones but like more sentimentally like oh that's not what i'm okay okay there was this one guy his name was maladin and he brought (laughs) this chapstick we were in grade one and it was show and tell and like everyone was just you know like bringing their stuffed animals and like all of their things and he showed up and he's holding this chapstick like in front of the class like honestly I kind of wish I did this in retrospect because my love for like the beauty industry obviously had not bloomed yet but his head and I just like can't believe I didn't was respect it at the time before there was don't know gurus? it was grade one and and he he had like a beautiful like fiery red hair like whatever and he's holding the chapstick and he's like this is my chapstick and like went on this whole thing. <laughs> what is the <this> story where <laughs> you, know, you asked memorable stories? I yeah. often think of Maladin and I, I wonder, is he still with in, a chapstick? 
Yeah, like, in the beauty world, like, have you transitioned and, like, made that a part of your life? I will say it is interesting. Like, you think of all the things you're doing now, and you're like, oh, I, w- I was the same person when I was, like, 100%. in grade one. Or- I was, like, singing, dancing, always wearing Dude. gowns to school. Like, yeah. I have older friends that remember being in, like, grade six when I was in kindergarten, and <laughs> they were like, you would literally just, like, walk around in gowns. And I was like, yeah, that's, like, still on brand for me. Like, yeah. I'm always overdressed for everything. And still on brand for me. I'm wearing just a t-shirt and jeans and pretty much the same outfit every single day. So there's definitely a nice contrast there. I did become a tomboy in grade three because I liked this boy named Jacob. It didn't work out for me very well. But that's also a memorable memory. It just... I was oh, yeah, don't for... change yourself for a guy. Maybe that's the lesson. <laughs> <laughs> don't become a tomboy when you really want to be wearing a ball gown. And also, don't wear a ball gown when you really want to be a tomboy, you know? Beautiful. What an inspiring message, Tori. Thank you so much. You know, I'm just out here. <laughs> when I was talking about stories, I was hoping for some fun little anecdotes from, like, you know, high school. And I really just asked that so we could get to my story. I did kind of get that <laughs> feeling, if I'm <laughs> honest. Um, high school was, like, amazing, but I... I it's, I'm honestly, I still think too close to it to to be like in a retrospective on oh, it. Oh, okay. I look back and I have a very specific memory of the first day of grade eleven. Okay. Which, at this point, the way it worked in my high school, I I came from a small town. There was like basically one high school in my town, so you know everyone in the school. It's like that kind of that kind of energy. Think like Netflix indie film. Um. Anyways, so first day of grade nine. My friend group and I, we had kind of established where we, would, like, sat in the calf. Like, we had this very specific table, and, like, no okay, one else great. takes that. So this is an episode of Mean Girls? No, 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 no. It's not like that at all. It was it was mixed. It wasn't just girls. It was, like, we had a nice, healthy balance. Okay. Um, And my friend, I actually, recalling the story, I don't remember how the food fight started, but... I got in a food fight on a TV show. Well, does can that you, count? Can you hold that thought until I'm done my story, or does it need to be said right no, now? No, I'm just saying I've also done it. That's just what I want to tell. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, anyways, focusing back in on the, uh, okay. the story here. So, the food fight started, and my best friend, Courtney, she has the most bionic, wicked arm I've ever known. Like, she grew up playing baseball, like, always is winning shot put at track and field. Like, the most incredible throw is from Courtney Stotts. Um, and, Courtney, if you're listening... I'm still scarred from this story, so thank you for that. So the food fight starts, and we're talking. Did she whip you? Can I get to the? Can you not to the punch? Room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're so we're all having everyone's throwing food, and like we're talking like sandwiches. There's like stew, liquid that should be contained. Things are flying across, and we're talking a full like cafeteria, and things are getting a little out of hand. And Courtney goes. She like locks her eyes on her target. And has one of those, uh, you know, like those granola chewy bars that are coated in chocolate? Yeah. They were the fancy granola bars that I would never have in my lunch, and I wish I would have. Yeah. Like, I had the cheap, like, PC ones. Oh, my God. I had hard-boiled eggs. It was like, <laughs> Ew, you were that kid. I was that That's kid. That's so disgusting. I know. It just smells rancid. Um, <laughs> so she has this hard, chewy bar, granola bar, and we were sitting opposite at a circular table, so I'm, like, looking at her, right? So she goes to stand up. She loads the bionic arm. I can see where she's looking. It's a kid about... You know, five t- tables directly behind me. She stands up, and this is the only time I've ever... Actually, I think this was more my fault than hers, actually. I was going to say it was the first time she ever had a fault in her throw. But at the same moment, I go to stand up to whip, like, a grape at someone or to oh. interject. And as this is happening, I'm standing up <gasps> as she releases the chewy bar. So it's like a movie. I see it coming at me in slow motion. Rotating. And I can, like, it's it's silver. It's foil. So I can see it reflecting out of the corner of my eye. But I'm, like, moving in slow motion at this point. This the grape has just left my hand. Story. And it hits me. Side of the temple. And I've honestly never felt pain like that before. Like, still to this day, that might have been the most, like, shock and in- shock-inducing experience from something I've ever had. And I feel like I, like... I am a pretty tough human. Like, I I get myself in situations, um, but I've never felt, like, pain like that before. And immediately, boom, a goose egg pops out of the side of my head. And at this point, like, I felt like the whole calf just went silent. <gasps> and Courtney's like, oh, Embarrassing. slow moment. She gasped. And, like, we all, everyone at my table sitting looking at me and looking at Courtney, like, what's about to happen? Wow. Anyways, so I'm in shock. We've got, like, a weird standstill happening. And then... I had to laugh, of course. I'm very, you know, known for You're laughing in bad laughing, situations. Yeah. And I, like, burst out laughing. So then everyone else starts laughing, too. Um, and my whole face was numb for the rest of the day. And hands down, that definitely was the most embarrassing moment in all of high school. And it's a shock that me and Courtney wow. remain, you know, best friends, friends. But yeah. 
that was probably the most confronting time of So high lesson school. here, kids, is don't chuck those chewy bars. Or just don't, yeah, don't get in a food fight at all. It definitely was not a good a good situation to be involved in. Hmm. But it also was kind of like one of those it's like a American high school movie, like yeah. a food fight. Like that sounds so not real. Oh, I like definitely had embarrassing moments, but I actually think I blacked them out. <laughs> in what way? Why? What what do you think? What would affect you so so intensely that you'd be like, I, I can't remember mm, that. Exactly. I can't remember them. So I know, and I know that I've had that awful feeling of just like, I need to forget this. And it goes into a category in my brain where I just don't let it be Well, there. the point of this podcast is to hear those great I stories. Know. So you're going to need to dig to, them up I'm and relive the trauma. Deep. Once I was walking around New York City with my like whole skirt up and I didn't know. my like, You sat at out. lunch the other day with your whole skirt up. I know. It happens. That's it's, a consistent it's embarrassing. problem for it's sure. It's embarrassing. It's more like I get really embarrassed when I like say something too loudly. Really? In a no, no. I don't get that energy wrong. from you. <laughs> that's no, no, no. Yes, I don't get that energy from me either. I just mean like if I if I speak out about something really passionately, but then I'm like very wrong about it, or if I like oh, that reminds me of our two bets we we played. Yeah, but not with friends. Okay. It's more like public scenarios. Like if I like like what? Mm, trying to like think of an example. Blacked out. Just don't even have I the memory. Them out. Like it's like if I just like because I'm such a huge personality sometimes, and I just will just speak out randomly, and then you do I, get aggressive quickly. Yeah, and it's aggressive, and it's then a I'll, problem. <laughs> no, you're just it's okay, intense. ladies. Be aggressive. It's good. No, yeah, there's I'm definitely intense. some value so in that. So sometimes I will see myself be too intense, and then I'll get a little embarrassed because I'll be like, mm. "Ooh, I probably should have like monitored that." Yeah, that's something I feel like I do try to be conscious of. Conscious. Okay, this is my problem. Conscience, conscious, and conscientious conscience you have a you have a conscience yeah. and i am conscience con- conscious of my environmental impact those are two different words you know what i'm saying yeah i conscience know it's two different words. You're, just, you're making it co- more complicated than it is i had a speech impediment as a child i really sometimes overthink my enunciation yeah my name if she was five years old would be Tawi webster <laughs> <laughs> actually yeah it would have been my r's and my w Tawi? were just wait mangled w- would you say webster would have been webster yeah Webster. Webster. Totally Webster. Oh, I hate it. It's so sad. That's not sad. Speech impediments are a real thing. The funniest part of that story, though, is that my mom and my parents growing up, they didn't want me to be affected by my speech impediment. They didn't want me to, you know, have low self-confidence or anything from it. Um, not that you should be embarrassed by it. Like, whatever. That's something that a lot of people deal with. Um, so they told me that I had an accent. Like, as if I was from a different family or, like, as if I was from Britain a or something. country, really. So sh- they would say, oh, yeah, no, you have an accent. And I was like, oh, I have an accent. So I would tell people that. It's like a confidence builder. Yeah, like, I thought I was cool. I had an accent. And then eventually when grade three hit and I still had a, a bad speech impediment, they were like, okay, speech therapy is clearly not working. We need to boost this. <laughs> um, boost this. And then eventually, whatever, I grew out of the speech impediment, although it does come back on, on days where I'm tired. But I grew up being overly confident about the fact that I had an accent, and now that I look back, I'm like... It's good. I kind of like that parenting tactic. It was, it was cute of them, but also confronting It's a little enabling. <laughs> you know, like, it's a little, like, you're perfect, don't worry. <sighs> I think, like, when I did things that were, like, shitty as a child, it was, like, recognized very quickly that it was shitty. Like, they'd be like... That's Having a wrong. speech impediment wasn't like us. <laughs> you're no, no, acting no, as if I'm true. actively... <laughs> She was a bad kid. I had a speech impediment. I was such a handful. Choosing to have the... I'm uh, sure you were a handful anyways with the speech impediment. Yeah. I was definitely a devious child. What were you like as a kid? Oh. I can just see you bouncing off the walls. Like... Yeah. I was just... I think I had a lot of energy. Um, I wasn't overly devious. I, I was a pretty mm. good kid overall. I, I would get like lost in my own creations. Like I was very creative. I would always be like dancing, always singing, always performing. Like the world was my stage and I loved myself in it. Like I would just be like, oh Mom, my God. look at me. <laughs> look at me. No, seriously. I was like very like I demanded a lot of attention as a kid. Oh my goodness. Which played further into my life, I think, as I grew up, which was interesting. A problem for sure. I a mean problem. I mean like I monitor my ego, don't worry. But <laughs> I'm again guys, if you're watching a video, you know I'm kidding. If you're listening on you podcast, sound like a- I sound like an <laughs> asshole. So <laughs> we'll just we'll just see how this plays out in the first episode. I might have to like rethink. Yeah, my we're gonna humor. have a, your manager's gonna call you and be like, Tori, you've gotta reevaluate my the humor way. tactics. But um yeah, no, I I was like honestly just like a super like 
like, I would just sing songs and dance mm-hmm. and, like, honestly just wanted to be performing for whoever would watch me at any time. I think one thing that we shared about being kids and growing up is that we were both very type A and, like, I was such a teacher's yeah. pet and, like, Same. wanted to be a goody-goody. Same. Goody-goody? goody two shoes. That was also things I struggled with as a child being yeah. embarrassed was if I, like, was to upset someone that I, like, someone of authority that I looked up to. Mm. That really bugged me. That still bugs Did, me. Have if you I, like, ever gotten sent down. to the principal's office? Oh, hell yeah. Well, Wait, in my, what? Yeah, okay, but in my later years, like, now Never in elementary school. Oh, mine's But reversed. then I had, like, a full-on spout of, like, craziness in Wait. my middle school years. Yeah, I was then really good again in high school. I don't I even know this. Okay, I want to hear. So in middle school, well, I just, I think it was, like, the young girl that was, like, confused and, like, you know. Oh, so it wasn't your fault. You're just deflecting the responsibility. It, it was my fault. I think it was a combination of a couple things. I think it was the fact that going into middle school, it felt much more like, uh, like a TV show. Like, there were so many more, like, you You know, were living in Gossip Girl world. Yeah, like, I was, yeah. like, living in this world where I I had an expectation of, like, how I wanted life to be and how I thought I could treat people, and it just, like, was, like, crazy. Um, and my friend who, and I, who are still friends, who went to middle school together, like, we always look back and we're like, why were we so wild? Like, we actually did have a burn book. Like, that was one of the times I got sent to the Wait, burn Wait, yeah. so mean. I know, I was a shitty person. That's what I'm saying. I think that's why— Everyone I, does go through a phase, I think, though, where you're, like, a bad person as a kid. I yeah. was definitely, like, not. I'm just, like, uh. obviously not like that any at all anymore. But I think it's, like, sad to look back because I think... Wait, so you got sent to the principal's office because they caught your burn book? Yeah. and That's then there, so and then crazy. I, also I used cannot to, believe like, that happened. Yeah, I also used to, like, fake notes. Like, I would, like, write notes to get myself out of class. I was, like, kind of a shit disturber. Like, I would, like, write... That's and my crazy. mom, I would always say, well, it's... I would be, like... I'd be, like, well, it's not, you know... um, it's not really bad because my mom's initials are TW and mine are TW. Oh, so, so I'm you would not like, be like, it wasn't really like forging. Like, I'm yeah. not forging it. I just, like, wrote it and you believed it. So, so it's really your fault as the teacher. Do that you, you want to know me. what I used to say to get out of situations as a kid? So if I would lie to my mom or my, my, my parents or whoever was watching me, um, they'd be like, oh, Jacqueline, did you just break that toy? And I'd yeah. be like, oh, no, I didn't. And then they'd, like, bring in the broken toy and be like, well, it's broken. Like, I just watched you do it, actually. Yeah. And be like, oh, I dreamed it. Sorry, I dreamed that I didn't do it. And that would be my excuse, that I dreamed it. That's so weird. Yeah. So I would just continually <laughs> say that. Weird kids. My mom would be like, did you brush your teeth? Yeah, I did. Jacqueline, no, you didn't. And I watched you not brush your teeth. Oh, sorry about that. I dreamed that I, I brushed my teeth. Who says that? <laughs> like, so, uh, like, weird. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, like, I'm really glad I... Grew, you grew out I, of that. You know, I think I was actually a little mean in high school, too, which I really regret. Like, these are things that I mostly regret. Not mean. No, but, but it's it, always a mixed bag. If you if you were to run into someone from high school, you're like, I don't know if they're going to say, I loved being in high school with you or I hated you. Or hated you. Yeah. Like, I don't know if people hated me or if they loved me. I don't really know. I had my group of friends. We were very, like, exclusive. We would only hang out with each other, which oh, I, like... Oh, God, that's crazy. That was I know. not my high school experience Well, it was very... Well, that's true and un true like in I was in a art school so like in I feel like it's different you grew up in the city I yeah, grew up like, and, in like, the country in the program yeah. I was friends with everyone in the theater program but I would say like on a day to day basis the friends that I hung out with it was much more like I had my like you know eight gr- yeah. friends that were girls they all had boyfriends or like the other guys in the group and that was kind of our like circle mm-hmm. um, and like that's something that really changed my perspective when I went to university because now I would say like I would love to be friends with whoever can you know yeah you know, add you're more open minded I think, life. as you grow up. Yeah, you kind, you just of, kind of. So, anyways, those yeah. are like more regrets, not embarrassing moments. <laughs> but well, I we were talking about P, uh, how you got sent to the principal's office. Oh yeah, so well, it was the, the notes, book then. and yeah. then and then also just yeah, like I was just. You've never gotten in like a physical fight though with anyone. Um, or anything like, yeah, I threw a book wait, at a what? girl once in yeah. school. Yeah, I was actually oh, too. I threw a book. No, I threw the burn book actually at. Yo, a girl. that's evil. Mm, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you just gotta accept it at this point. So, I mean, guys, this was like almost a decade ago, but um, as a child, I was. Like, I swear, I'm nice. <laughs> that's not. Convincing. I know it's really. I'm not selling myself very well. Uh, that's okay. No, I think I think there's value in just being honest and not sugarcoating anything. True. Um, as a child, I definitely had some issues in the sense that. <laughs> Was a troublemaker. Trouble. Tr- all the R's secret, are coming out again. No, but you Speaking continue to be a troublemaker in secret. People which just, is almost worse. Like, mm-hmm. if people were to say that I was a bitch, I would own up to that and be like, you know what? You're right. Yeah. And I would, I'm like a very, like, realist. Like, if I have something wrong, I will say it to your right. face. I continue to be that way in my 20s. Like, I'm very straight. <sighs> I say it how it is. You're right. People don't like me sometimes because I'm too honest, which, like, <clears throat> I'd rather be that than. Faking it and like secretly, secretly a bitch, but not really. 
I try to be outwardly nice to all people because I think the world does deserve more love, but... Yeah, but not if they don't deserve it. I love to be outwardly nice if people deserve it. Mm. But I don't like this when is people a, let are me give them, nice. Let me give them the story of how... What what we're talking about, and this is in the context of Jacqueline being in, must have been JK, like the first year of kindergarten. Yeah. Um, but this is also just, I think, still rings true to my personality of yeah. what I'm like, which Seems is really, like <laughs> which is really funny. Um, so yeah, we're in JK, and my best friends were Jeffrey, and then my cousin Michael, and oh no, I must have been in SK then because my cousin was a year younger. Um, so we are, the SK and JK classes were together, so we were with the younger year and then our year, and for some reason, this poor, oh my god, god bless this kid, Zach, he had new shoes, and he, like, showed up to school in these new bless shoes. Bless his soul. And for some Zachary, reason, Zachary, you know back in, you know, like, in elementary school, you would have, like, indoor shoes and outdoor shoes? Yeah, Is we that what should you guys start did? that again. Yeah, just to <laughs> keep a pair nice and clean. Um, so they were his indoor shoes, these brand new shoes. And for some reason, I go to Jeffrey and Michael. I was like kind of like the ringleader and like would tell them to do bad things and they would listen to me. So I was like, hey, uh, boys, go steal, go steal Zach's shoe and put it in the, in the school fridge. It was like, not like a real fridge. It was like, um, you like a little play set. It was like a little like fake kitchen. So I was like, go put it in the fridge. They're like, okay, Jacqueline, we'll go do that. And so they go take exclusively one shoe from Zach's cubby, and they put it in the fridge. So then uh, I guess lunch hour rolls around, or recess is over. I don't, I don't know the timing of when this happened. So we're going to, like, say the carpet in the kindergarten class, and the teacher, and I guess Zach comes coming in, or com- comes in from the hallway, and it's like, hey, uh, teacher, like, I can't find my other shoe. It's brand new. Like, I just don't know where it is. Like, my mom's going to be so mad that I Aww, lost it. And yeah. me, Jeffrey, and Michael are kind of sitting there cross-legged on this carpet, kind of snickering to each other, because we know that it's in the fridge and so of course the teacher's like okay class like we're gonna help find Zach's shoe let's all go look for it so the whole class is looking they get up and start looking and the three of us stay sitting on the carpet just sitting there oh I thought you were gonna say you'd find it oh (laughs) that would be so you (laughs) I found it you're the fucking bitch that put it there honestly I that might have honestly been the ending of the story because I remember all of this, like, from my perspective, but the ending of the story, I only really know from other people retelling it to me. But somehow, the shoe was found eventually. Actually, I think one of the boys, like, Michael or Jeffrey, Owned up suge- to it. No, 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 like, suggested. Or just suggested Oh, maybe look. it's in the fridge. And then they open it up, and they're like, how, why would it be in there? And they're like, I don't know. And then they ended up getting caught for oh. it. So they both got in trouble. And back in the day, you would get a cloudy note if you were bad or a sunshine note if you were good. Mm. So they both got cloudy notes home that day for stealing and hiding well the kids' Well-deserved shoe. kids. And, <laughs> in but my then I, I got away clean. And I was the one that, you know, really, really pressured them into doing it. So I clearly had some some devilish behavior as a child and haven't shaken that all of it just yet. But we're trying to be a better people. No, well, I feel like we haven't sold ourselves <laughs> as good people, which is untrue. Here's all the good and charitable things I've done this year so far. First off. No, I, no, but I think that's the point is that, like, you guys see all... I feel like we don't have to prove ourselves as good people. Because you naturally hope that people that are listening know that we are in that is, like, true to, you know, who we are as, as mm-hmm. you know, like, moral, I, ethical people in society. But no. beyond that, I think the point of the podcast is to let you in on the fact that, you know, we ain't perfect and, like... I think ultimately the dream is I want this to feel like an extended FaceTime call. Like, I want the listener to feel like they're in on this FaceTime group chat and, like, we're all just chatting together or, like, telling stories. Yeah, and it should feel like a friendship. Be in the tub when we FaceTime, which is. Oh, yeah. So I exclusively only answer (laughs) or make FaceTime calls when I'm in the bathtub. I just feel like there's no distractions. Toilet, flush, potty (laughs) talk. Yeah, we should film a podcast episode in the tub. Oh. With bubble. That was actually our other idea. That was the the lucky lucky duck duck idea. We were thinking Mm. we'd brand it, like, with the yellow. Don't give away our ideas to the people yet. Trademark those first. True. Um, Oh, gosh. There's just... This podcast, I don't know what this means for us. I don't know where we're going. But all all I know is that... All I know is we started, and we always say, it's one thing to have an idea, but it's another to do it. Mm -hmm. So here we are. We are doing it. That is so true, though. I think with anything creative... Yo, this was a lesson that I learned, actually, recently... First of all, someone said to me, yo, you've got a bad stain on your pants, eh? That's mustard. Oh, that's crazy. I've got coffee on my white oh. pants. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. It's mustard. How I did think it get to mustard. the ankle? That's my question. Guys, I like to eat sitting down on my couch, so oh, maybe. It's okay. Sh- I. Oh, yeah, because I had a hot dog for breakfast. Today? Yeah. That's crazy. I know, but it's fine. Okay, that's moving on. That's probably where it's from. Moving on. Um, Creativity. Creativity. Just because you're doing something creative, no one owes you 
you're, you're never owed success or anyone's attention. Like, true. I think it, you get into a problem when you are doing something and you're like, well, I'm putting all my heart into this and this is my creative outlet and this is my thing. Well, because then it's people, all about me, 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 me. Well, it's also like, yeah, like, whoa, get over yourself. Totally. Everyone's doing cool stuff. Totally. Your stuff doesn't matter. And 100%. <laughs> knowing that I think is actually important and it puts you back into perspective and, and when pe- you feel like people owe you something... Like, but I think oh, that's I think the point. It's like we're doing this for ourselves. No right. one could hear this, right? And I think we will think, "Oh, that was fun." Exactly. And and like what you were saying, everyone says everyone has a good idea. Yeah. Someone will be like, "Oh, I want to." Especially if I start talking about YouTube, someone will always say, "Oh, you know what? I've got this really great idea for this YouTube channel," and blah blah blah. And I'm like, "That's great! Like, it's great nowadays with things being so accessible. Anyone can hit the upload button. Anyone can post. It is so accessible." And I think that's like the craziest thing because 20 years ago you can never just create your own podcast or yeah. create your own online TV show or whatever um, but it also gives you no room for excuses and I don't think a lot of people like that because pe- everyone wants to say oh I have Everyone's this great lazy. idea yeah. it's like well then do it and this was up, us with this podcast we've been saying for the past few months we had this idea it's like well let's just do it and doing it I think or the idea is half the struggle but actually just building up the courage to do it is another I agree and um, here we are here we are Body episode talk. one down the down the toilet, flushing Flusher. the potty. How can we tie this into the title? Oh, <laughs> I need to work on the sound effects here. Um, Anyways, thank you for tuning in. If you've listened all the way to the end of episode one, Potty Talk, we love you. Thanks for being here. Um, we should give them hope and also say that since this is the first episode, this could be a pilot. This could be the one that's reaching on air, but it's only up from here. It's so, only up from here. This we'll one get may better. never see the light of day, but if it does, we appreciate you for listening. Uh, thanks guys so much for tuning in to the first episode of Potty Talk. Definitely let us know your feedback. DM us. Follow us. You can follow me at Jacqueline Forbes and on YouTube at Jacqueline Forbes. Tori, where can they, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at Tori Webster, and that's it. We gotta get her. We've gotta get her starting a YouTube <laughs> channel soon. Uh, anyways, make sure you guys subscribe, follow, turn on the notifications, stay tuned because there are lots of more episodes coming. We're gonna be talking shit for a long time. Let's get it. Thanks, guys, for watching the first episode of Potty Talk, the podcast where we shit, shit talk, talk ourselves. ourselves. This has been the first episode. Over and out. out. Bye, guys. Cut. <laughs>